there are six traits of a, of, a, of a challenger person and a challenger brand that we like to talk about. And and if one can surface those by, through encouragement, through conversation, through more openness, and actually create the environment for people to, to question as a leader. And that, I think I think challenges emerge from people um, and, and that will help your organization challenge the category. <laughs> Can you talk a bit about Challenger ID and how how that works, you know, how it works from kind of a brand level or a company level down to an individual level? Just like brands and companies, uh, people, people need to have the right mindset about what could be. Um, rather than a preservation mindset or a victim mindset, um, to, 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 to try and work through when they feel that way or when they default to that mindset, because we all, we all do like in different circumstances, right? We can all kind of feel, uh, you know, slipping, you know, slipping into a victim mindset um, and wanting to act out um, or be passive aggressive about, about how we, how we react, but helping people um, through that is starts with an authentic self, right? It starts with true awareness of, actually what what happens to me when people ask me these kinds of questions or expect this of me or or treat me in this way um and our our ability to uh i guess internalize and grow and learn how to to change how we react um to those circumstances as individuals um is is a really powerful thing to, to make a change like this requires emotional energy. And mm. as an individual, it's easier to garner that, to go through that, and to do it yourself. Um, to do that with a team is slightly more difficult. To do that with 10 teams is even more difficult, and to do it with 100 teams is, is a heck of a more difficult. So, yes, absolutely. It's, it, one wishes that the, the corporates would um, uh, uh, embrace this, um, and, and I hope some of them do, um, and I'm sure some of them will. Um, but yes, the, the, the real interest and opportunity is emerging and it's emerging from, uh, from uh, smaller teams, smaller companies, companies that have uh, the emotional energy to be able to make change happen. Can you, can you talk a little bit about this idea of, of sort of like mindsets of businesses and people um, and how that can, can help them to, to build better brands and to communicate more effectively? I think it's really important that people try and think beyond the category, right? So we try and encourage people to not succumb to category convention, the way things have always been done. First and foremost, approach the category with a what we call intelligent naivety. So it's almost the, it's the opposite of what an incumbent or a, a traditional leader in the category might be. They might kind of place a big value on experience and expertise. And actually challenges place a very big emphasis on uh, intelligent naivety there are six traits of a, of, a, of a challenger person and a challenger brand that we like to talk about and and if one can surface those by through encouragement through conversation through more openness and actually create the environment for people to to question as a leader and that, i think i think challenges emerge from people um and and that will help your organization challenge the categories. So the first one is authentic um, identity, um, and that is having a true sense of self, understanding your own DNA, understanding how that, you know, kind of how you live that out and, and how you bring that um, into conversations, into the workplace, into teams, um, and, and, and how you, I guess, avoid conformity and promote a sense of realness. Because in that creates the emotional connection, which feeds the emotional energy, which creates further momentum. The idea of, of, of kind of ambitious purpose is really, really critical. Um, you know, and one can have purpose with a big P, which is quite grand um, and, and all about, you know, you know am, incredible goals that you wish um, for in, in society and your family or your organization, etc. But one can also have purpose with a small P, which are like, what are the small differences? What are the small things you can change that will make a, a big difference to people? Um, and and being able to understand 
how your personal values and your work goals intersect, I think, is really critical. Um, and people don't often ask that question. Um, they treat them as separate things. And I think mm. it's a very important question to ask of oneself. Um, and so in the in the program, we do go through a series of exercises. So there's like a four to five minute video, then there's a 20 to 25 minute exercise that you do, and you've got to answer some of these questions, which are not, not easy, and then go through a bit of an assessment at the end, a self-assessment at the end. Um, the third trait, Ross, is about questioning everything, and that we spoke about a little bit earlier about that kind of path dependency that corporates have or categories have. Um, typically, they turn out this way. Um, typically, people, you know, uh, this is the way things are done around here. Or this is the way categories behave. Or, you know, when it comes to uh, a category like this, this is the language that we use. Um, and... Um, you know, having the fresh eyes and the intelligent naivety to kind of ask upstream questions, um, to ask why can't we borrow, you know, this idea from another category and put it into ours and insert some new emotion or different kind of perspective into our industry is an important way for um, brands to think, but an important way for people to think as well, you know, that, that we, we all evolve um, over time and we all grow up and we all learn Um but we don't learn from conformity. We learn from asking questions. So, you know, we should be encouraging people to do more question seeking, not looking for people who always have the answer. Because the people who always have the answer probably gave that same answer to the same people 10 times before. What you're looking mm. for are people that question everything because you're going to find new opportunity in those questions and in the answers to those questions. Then there's the um, the fourth one is agile inventiveness, and that's about doing more with less, which we all kind of, you know, we're very used to that that kind of statement. That's about kind of re relinquishing control, and, and, and that takes a strong sense of self-identity, actually, to be able to relinquish control and not always think that control creates the expected, creates the right outcome. Actually, collaboration and and, and, and having less control sometimes can lead you down, you know, new paths, which suddenly reveal new opportunities. And if you're flexible about that and actually get to a point in the road and go, I'm actually going to go left, not right, because that's what people normally do. And I'm actually going to, or I'm going to create my own path. You know, that ability to be able to think like that, to be able to, uh, in the moment, not answer your team or your, your boss or your, you know, your, your partner or whatever in the same way, but actually, you know, think about, you know, is, is there a new answer to this, this question or is there a new question um, to, 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 this, to this particular situation? Um, the fifth one is optimistic grit. Um, and that, you know, actually we have that in, in spades in this continent, you know, like we have it in us um, as people, um, the ability to kind of be resilient, to deal with hardship, to deal with constraint, um, and not and and not to see constraint as um, a, a limitation, but as an opportunity. Um, and I think that, that you know the ability to be able to deal with ambiguity um, and many different answers to because you've asked so many different questions is is really powerful because then you can. Mm. Kind of pick one. Hey, it failed. Try another one. Hey, that one kind of half worked. Hey, try another one that really worked. So, you know, that I, I think the ability to do that, and to your point, having smaller teams to be able to work like that is 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 really powerful. And and hopefully, we're going to see a lot more opportunity come out of that for smaller organisations in the future. And then the last one is about inspiring others, and I mean that's always important in making things work right and making things happen in, in in bringing about the kind of change that we've been talking about is you've got to bring people along with you it's it, it's yes smaller teams one person business get it done but if you've got teams and then teams upon teams you have to inspire others to, to be able to change with you or change alongside you and 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 sometimes when we when we show up at work or at home or whatever, the way we, the way we inspire others is by a default response, right? Um, how was your day? Oh, terrible. Um, or 
I just don't want to talk about it. Or what, so that's a neutralizer response, you know. But actually, how do you how do you rethink how you respond to people, the language you use, the the, the kind of framing that you do for them in in perhaps responding to a question, so that you're not creating a negative frame but a positive frame into which they can insert another image or an emotion which builds off yours. And I think that is 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 really sounds esoteric but it's actually very practical and you know the more we do that with people and we 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 create these constraints for them and disable them from from asking questions to remove the constraints you land up with a normal curve right and basically it's a muddy middle everything's gray nothing stands out and actually what you want to do as a as a challenger or as a thinker as a um, a person is invert that curve right and actually be brave enough to have people either love or hate you. And and when you get that right, um, you might have a smaller number of people um, who love you versus um, the rest of the market, but actually the rest of your team or whoever it might be in your organization. But those that do love you deeply.